Hey everyone, uh, <clears throat> hey everyone, Zeprix here, and today we're going to kind of start a series. We're going to try and play some games, I'm going to try and talk about my thought process and how I approach things, and uh, I'll be happy to answer anybody's questions in the comments, so be sure to leave any questions you have um, about anything. I'm going to try and make videos again, and I, and I want to make stuff for uh, beginners and such, so uh, we're going to we're gonna start with this game, and uh, if there's any cards in particular you want me to cover as well, or any situations or ideas, I'll be happy to make videos on them as well. Um, again, just leave your comments, and I will do as best as I can. Okay, so this first game we have here is... Uh, well, we've got quite a bit going on here, but there's no village, so there's really a limit in what you can build here. Um, villages being probably the number one most important thing in building an engine. Uh, so there's a number of there's a couple of ideas we could do here. We could uh, we could open money lender to thin and use that to get some golds off of the market squares here. Ghost ship is going to be oppressive. That's probably going to be the terminal we want to use. So I'm torn between opening a ghost ship here and a money lender. I think I'm going to try a money lender market square for my opening and try and get some golds. And then the next five I hit, I'll just pick up a ghost ship. And uh, <clears throat> I think that's going to be my plan because the ghost ship attack really is going to be pretty brutal. Um, I will try and pick up crop rotation as well. Uh, it's quite a fine card. In fact, here I am able to buy it, and I will. Um, <clears throat> crop rotation is pretty nice because it basically you get to draw two cards here. It's pretty nice. Um, I am going to trigger this shuffle as well. We are going to discard one estate, and we are going to toss an estate into the shuffle, which we're okay with because we have crop rotation. We're going to see what he buys here. He could buy his own crop rotation. In fact, I think it's good for him too. Um, another important thing, like here I could buy Go Ship, right? Go Ship is a nice card. I think I might, except, all right. <clears throat> so there are a couple options here. So we could buy Go Ship, but we kind of want to continue to thin cards here, and we do want golds. So I think I'm actually going to take another market square here. Yeah, see, now if we draw the market square, I am going to take the two golds here, I think. And it's going to be quite good. And then we can start focusing on ghost ship. Yeah, like here, I'm going to just take my gold. Now we can think about ghost ship. However, I do think... We can wait on it a bit. Hmm. Actually, it might be time now to get the ghost ship. Let's just let's try. It. Let's just get the ghost ship. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> so he gets his second ghost ship. We will play this market square, and we will play ghost ship. We don't draw. We don't draw the money lender, and we don't draw one of our market squares. So we know our hand. Because we know we have three estates, we have one estate here, so we know for a fact we've got two estates, a money lender, and a market square. It's actually really important to track a deck, um, especially your own deck, but you can even track your opponents, and we'll cover that in another video, I think. Uh, but I'm gonna, th I think I'm just gonna buy a double market square here. Basilica, when you buy a card, if you have two or more coins left, you can take two VP, and I think I, I want the market squares anyway because they're nice for the. Um, they're nice for a money lender, basically. And uh, I like the golds. But we get to score a bit. And it combos nicely with the market squares, I think. Like here, I will just take two golds. Now, a thing you could do here is you could say, buy a copper, right? You could buy a copper and get Basilica points. Uh, that's usually not worth it. Uh, but. I could spend a coffer as well to get 2 VP, which I also don't think is worth it, and I don't think I want a seller. I think I'm just going to buy the baker at this point. 
I think Baker is a fine card to have. It's a nice cantrip, and presuming I don't draw it dead, it's good. I expect to get ghost shipped pretty soon here. He gets his first gold. We have, we're up on golds three to one, I believe. Yeah. So we're gonna play in market square. I don't want to trigger the shuffle that much, but at the same time, we don't care that much because we do have crop rotation. So here I could province already. Uh, we could actually, we could do a play here where we might actually buy copper. Maybe that's crazy. Let's try it. Let's buy copper and just take all of these uh, Basilica points. It's a bit of a crazy play, but I do like the Basilica points and it might be worth it. <clears throat> it's not something I would ordinarily do, but winning the Basilica split 10 to two seems pretty good. So I'm willing to try it. Plus we have the money lender anyway, too. So he may end up getting some Basilica points here. He does. So there's no reason to buy anything. I could buy a silver, and one silver's okay, actually. Um, so why I bought a silver there Normally buying silver is bad, but one silver is okay, right? Because, okay, well this is not a good, anyway. So one silver is okay, because let's say you have a hand of three gold, that's nine money, which is enough for a province. If you have a hand of two gold and a silver, that's eight, which is also a province. So it's fine either way, really. Uh, he did buy his first province. I'm going to actually take another baker here. And now we're, we're going to start greening. He bought his first province. We'll see if he continues to green. We'll see. I am going to want another ghost ship as well. So this is not very good. I am going to take my second ghost ship here. So it looks like our ghost ship bottom decks, which isn't very good. And he's going to take his second province. So now I'm definitely glad I took that VP. All right, we are going to trigger this, and we are going to buy a province here. And the provinces are actually going to help him a bit with the crop rotation, so we have to be careful about that. There is a ghost ship in these next 12 cards. He misses province. He probably could buy duchy at this point. I'm not sure I like the, the gold. So I'm going to play ghost ship over playing the money lender and we did draw two golds but I do want to attack him and I will take a province here using the baker tokens. Seems like we don't have nearly as much golds as I thought I would. Yeah, these, these ghost ships are quite oppressive. So he doesn't get to province. He buys another gold. That definitely should have been a duchy, I think. Here we can take a province, and I think we will. I think it's good. So he gets to province himself, and we will continue on. So we definitely bought too many market squares. This is not good, but we're gonna play the ghost ship here. 
Looks like we're going to have to pass. We could take a seller, but I don't think it's quite that good. We do hit province here. So if he buys a province, I'm actually going to put the gold on first and then the copper. Hmm. Yeah. Because I will spend a single coffer. I'm okay with spending a single coffer. I want to top deck the gold. <clears throat> so we have quite a sizable lead. He can't buy province. He has to buy Duchy Silk Road. He buys a state over Silk Road, which is pretty questionable. And we don't quite get there. So. Uh, we could buy Silk Road Estate. It might be worth it. But I think I'm just going to play it safe and take the duchy here. There's no reason to ever spend this coffer. I don't think. I think we're going to get ghosted around here. It's coming, yeah. So I think... The market squares are not helping me that much with mon in terms of money density. Okay. We do have it now, and we will take the province. And that was a kind of complicated game. I ended up only getting four golds. He bought two golds, which I didn't think was very good. Uh, he played it pretty inefficiently, I would say. So I think, and I think I took too many market squares as well. I think I, I did get VP for them though. I could have taken silvers over the market squares at some point, and that may have been better actually. Um, I think I overdid it with the market squares. So I think if I had replayed that at some point, I would have pivoted to silvers. And I think I would have had a much better time hitting province. Uh, other than that, I actually liked my play in this game for the most part. I think I actually played it alright. He didn't play it terribly either. Uh, he did get two ghost ships. He got about as thin as I did. I think his mistakes started coming in. He definitely wanted more market squares to kill for golds. So he was lacking in that department. Um, also, he bought golds at six, which wasn't great because he didn't get more market squares earlier on to blow up to his money lender. Um, that's my thinking on it. I hadn't, I didn't follow him too closely. He may have also played market squares when he had a money lender in hand. You definitely want to take the gold you overdrawing the card early on. Uh, but overall, I don't think he played that poorly. He just played inefficiently. And when you play inefficiently with money, you tend to lose. You don't always lose. Uh, it really depends on the shuffles, but sometimes... You know, things don't work out too well. Um, he did get two provinces before I got my first province, but I also had more golds. Um, I had more flexibility, and then I had the 10 VP as well. So I was eight points up to him. Uh, so I could, I could afford to wait a little bit longer. Uh, that being said, I think that's all there is to say, I guess. <laughs> Uh, we're going to try and play another one now. Okay. Well, if the Necropolis and the Overgrown Estate would load, that would be great. We have another pretty miserable looking board. Probably more miserable than the last one. But there's quite a few options we can consider here. So typically when you see Peddler on the board, you want to go for it, uh, especially if there's a source of plus buy on the board, and there is in Sir Martin and Trade Route. So a kind of deck you can construct here, um, you could focus on Sir Martin and Trade Route early to pile drive these Peddlers. Of course, it's not the most important thing on the board. The most important thing on the board is getting to Witch, because Witch curses are always pretty good. So there's a number of things you can do here. 
there's colony on the board we definitely want to get colonies in the end peddlers will definitely help us get to platinum so there's a lot of things we want to do we want which that's the number one priority but we also want peddlers and I think that's important so we'll probably get one witch we want all these advisors we want our we want we want a lot of these cards uh, treasure map I'm not too keen on we're gonna definitely open silver let's make him stop waiting um, <clears throat> so I'm leaning towards either double silver or engineer and I think engineer is good we could miss five that's the problem with not double silver and we are likely to miss five now but he does take Sir Martin so he opens trade route Sir Martin so uh, we can imagine he's going to try and aim for these peddlers I think it's not a good open but it might be all right we'll see we'll see if it works out for him um, I took an engineer I probably actually should have just taken the advisor and then took the engineer this turn so I think that was a definite misplay on my part. I will get Trade Route now. Because I do want to thin cards. And also buy a potential free peddler, depending on my draws. So he flips two coppers, quite friendly for me. We are going to play the Necropolis out of habit. Now if we blew up the Engineer, the peddler would cost six instead of four. We're not going to be able to buy a peddler anyway, so we might as well blow this up. Now, actually, do we blow this up? I actually don't think we do, because we do want to buy a witch. And if we take two debt, rebuying the engineer this turn, we might not actually get to buy a witch. Now here... We're gonna we're gonna draw the advisor and presumably a silver. We'll see what he denies. But either way, it looks like we might trigger the shuffle here. So I think if I remember correctly, the top three cards here are gonna be silver, copper, and advisor. Let's see if I'm correct. Wow. Nice. So we'll see if he denies the advisor. Denying silver is probably better. He does deny the silver. It looks like we're likely to get to five anyway and we will kill this we don't get to five so now we have a decision here we can buy double peddler or we can buy another advisor and I think I want double peddler here now we're pretty likely to hit five we're also about due to get hit by Sir Martin he skips a peddler and a copper we're not too heartbroken about that <clears throat> All right, we'll see what he flips here. He may deny the advisor. He does. Now what I'm going to do is I do want the witch. And I don't want to be over terminal, so I will actually now blow up the engineer because I have trade route and I have witch. I don't want three terminals. Two terminals is fine because we have a necropolis. We don't want to over terminal, though. So now our goal is going to be playing a lot of cards. He may deny advisor here. He does. Actually, this do okay. So normally I should have played Necropolis here first to make Peddler cheaper, but it actually didn't matter. I played too fast there, but we still get two Peddlers anyway, so we didn't get burned there. But that could have been a misplay. So always be careful, never play cards too fast. Always take at least a second to think about your decisions. He does hit an advisor. The Sir Martin is a bit annoying. Here he's gonna be able to buy Quad Peddler, which is quite good. So he is gonna do that. And it's gonna be nice for him. I'm gonna play the advisor here first because I know there's an advisor in the top three and I do want Wow, he denies silver. Okay. I expected him actually to deny the advisor over the silver, which is interesting. We'll see what he denies here. Okay, he denies an advisor now. We are going to play these peddlers, and we're going to play the necropolis. Now we want the trade route, so he should deny the trade route here. 
We're drawing more and more of our deck, if you're noticing. He does deny the trade route. Now, we have a decision, right? We could buy Platinum now. Platinum is quite good. We could buy a Crypt to thin a bunch of these Coppers, if he lets us have the Crypt, which is not terribly likely, actually. Um, at the same time, we could buy an Archive. I think we're going to keep it simple, and we're just going to buy the Platinum here. Because at the end of the day, we are just playing money. And a Platinum is nice. At the end of the day, we're just going to buy Colonies. And also, Platinums are unkillable by Knights, so it's a nice investment. Here, he could buy Double Peddler. He probably should buy Advisor Peddler. Okay, so he's going harder for the Knights here. Here, we have a decision, right? So we could play Trade Route, killing a Copper, or we could give him a Curse, and I want to give him a Curse. Here I'm going to take Sir Bailey. It's a free Knight, basically. It's a cantrip, so it's quite good. So we can attack him, and potentially hit some of his Knights. So we have a decision here. I haven't been tracking his deck. So I don't know what to deny, but typically it's good to deny draw. That's the safe deny. But I don't know what he has in his deck. So he is going to probably take the last peddler here. We may see him continue to take knights, which I think would be a mistake. Huh, okay. So I don't know what he has in hand. Okay, so now we have the Village Knight. I'm actually quite interested in taking that from him. So let's see if we can... We'll definitely get there, and we will take Dame Molly. Happily, by the way. We are going to trigger this shuffle. So now we get a an interesting one. He gives us the Advisor. He should deny the Trade Route, but he may deny the Peddler. He should deny a Trade Route, though. No, he denies the Peddler. Okay, well, I want the Necropolis, and I'm happy to thin a copper here. Okay, so we are going to take Dame Molly, and we could take Sir Vander as well. Um, him hitting Sir Vander is interesting. I actually think I'm going to take an Archive, though. So we have a Witch in these next two cards, and I would like to have it and not have him Advisor discard it. So we are going to play the Peddler here first over the Advisor. Normally we would play Advisor first, but I do want to find the Witch. So he takes Sir Vander. We do find the Witch. So now he has to decide what to deny here. That's not an easy decision. He denies the Archive, which is probably correct. All right, so now he can't deny a village. He might as well deny Dame Molly. We will play Peddler here. We will play Necropolis and Witch. We will play Sir Bailey. We don't hit anything there. In fact, that was quite friendly. So now we could take Colony now. That would boost his trade routes, and he's got one more than me, so that would actually help him. Or we can continue to buy Platinums, and I think I want one more Platinum before we green. So he's taking a bunch of Knights, which, between my Peddlers and my Platinums, I'm not too heartbroken about losing a bunch of my cards. Here, though, normally I wouldn't deny the Knight, but it's Sir Michael, and I don't want to lose my this hand, because it's quite good. So I will deny the attack. I think overall, though, his biggest mistake easily is not getting Witch. He really wants to curse me. I would have a much harder time tackling his cursing if he had just gotten a Witch. He does hit my Archive. It's sad, but it's not the worst thing in the world either. So he could continue to dip into the Knights. He actually has only the necropolis so he's only going to play maybe one or two knights a turn and once you get platinum you can always buy more platinums peddlers are untouchable so i'm really not scared of his deck at this point so the knights are a bit of a trap 
Usually knights are quite good, but on this, but it really depends on how many of them you can play. If you can play a billion of them a turn, oh, he tossed my witch. If you can play a billion of them a turn, it's pretty good. We will play Dame Molly. We skip a curse and a peddler. See that even the knights that I have aren't that good. I'm taking them because I can play them. So basically, I have Bailey and Molly, but they they do things. So here I could take Platinum and an Archive, and I think I will. I don't mind another Archive. So now we definitely will take a Colony next time around. Here I will deny the Advisor over the Peddler. We'll see what he hits. His knights have hit a total of two of my cards, Archive and Advisor. So he hasn't had terrible good luck with his knights. He could have been he could have hit more cards, definitely, I think. Than he has. And that's typically sometimes how night games go. I am gonna play the advisor here, because I expect there's some good cards in these three. I haven't been tracking, but I expect there's an advisor in there. And I want it in the shuffle whenever I trigger this with the peddler, so I will play advisor first. Yeah, this is, okay, no advisor, but these are all fine cards to have in the discard. So this is not that good. I will play Dame Molly first. And I have a decision here, right? I can kill the Necropolis now. It's not that good. It's actually not that good. However, I think I am going to keep it. And I do either want another Archive or an Advisor, and I think I will take the Archive here. We also have to watch Piles. Advisors are low. Curses are not probably going to run. But the Knights could. So we do need to buy a colony now. He has trashed one curse. But he has two more. Which means he has the uh, VP Knight, right? Alright, so he hits me here. I am going to actually toss the Advisor over the Archive. And I definitely want to play the Witch. He skips one of my platinum, so I have another platin here, I think, if I've tracked correctly. I do. So I'll play the archive and the witch, I'll have a clean shuffle, and I'll find my other my third platinum for sure. He I don't think he has a platinum. Which is not good. He's his deck is looking in terrible shape here. And it's definitely because he overterminaled. He got way too many knights. Um, Servander doesn't do anything for him unless it dies, in which case it gives him a gold. Um, I'm actually going to take the copper here over either of those. Oh. <laughs> oh, he must have skipped one of my platinums on the previous turn. Maybe that's what happened. So, I messed up a bit there. I think I'm going to actually take another archive. I think it will be good. So he had three peddlers. We will deny the peddler. It's pretty likely he's going to find one of his trade routes. And he'll probably also want to play a knight. But really, if he has both trade routes in hand, he should have played both of them. He doesn't, though. He should buy platinum here, and he does. I will take advisor here. All right, he should deny a witch. But we'll see what he denies. He does deny Witch. So we'll play Advisor here. He should deny Platinum. This is not looking to be a very good turn already. Alright, so he denies the Platinum, which is correct. We'll play some Paddlers here. Alright, we actually have a chance to refine the Witch. So we will play both of these Archives right now. Actually, we'll play Advisor now. All right, this is amazing. 
now we will archive, right? So we archive, we find the witch. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we don't. Actually, we might wait on the witch this turn because I do want to hit colony. So we will play Sir Bailey. We will play Dame Molly. We'll play the Necro. We'll trash here. And we are going to buy the colony now. And we are going to take another archive with it. So now we're looking pretty good. The archives are starting to pay off. We're actually going to toss his archive. I don't want him to have archive ability. Because it's serving me so well. I don't want him to have that. Alright, this is actually not a bad attack. I am going to lose the silver over the advisor. Silver isn't that good. I have plenty of economy with the platinum. We're going to take the peddler, the advisor, and we will take the witch here over the platinum. We will play advisor. He will deny the archive, or maybe platinum. He probably should deny the pull archive, but he denies the plat. So now this is looking good. We need the platinum right now this turn. The necro is in the next four cards, and we're going to guarantee draw it. So we'll play the witch now. We'll play some peddlers. We'll play Sir Bailey. We hit his plat. I mean, we skip his plat, which is quite good. We actually played that out of order, too. Now he, we're never going to see this platinum. I play too fast. I should have saved Sir Bailey here. So now if I want to hit Colony, I have to kill an advisor, which is not something I'm willing to do. So we are we could kill Colony, too. So I think we're just going to cry and take double archive here. But definite misplay there. Don't do what I did. Um, if there's a card you want to find guaranteed and you have a cantrip in hand with a bunch of advisors, always play the advisors first. And then when your opponent denies the last card, you can draw it with your cantrip. So don't mess up like me. That was a definite mistake. I should have thought about what I was doing. He doesn't get to colony. So we can win in the next two turns here. So we can buy the archive and the advisor. So we're likely going to get to province. I'm going to actually take Dame Molly over the peddler. All right, so he gets his gold. So now his knight's actually useful. We will play Dame Molly. We skip his plat, which is quite good. We'll play the peddler. All right, so we're going to draw our deck. And now let's not make the same mistake that we made last time. Let's play it smart, right? So we're going to play our advisors now. He should deny archive. But it's not really going to matter. We're going to find everything, more or less. We'll play our advisor. Yeah, we're going to find everything. Easily, too. We'll play the archive. And we will put advisor into our hand. Now we have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 bucks. Let's get 19. Let's buy Colony, and let's buy Archive. And next turn, now there's nothing he can do, right? He has to deny Trade Root at all costs, and if he doesn't, he loses. Because now we're threatening to buy these two advisors. And plus, even if he does somehow deny it and we never get to Trade Root, which isn't going to happen because we have two Archives set down, but even if it did happen... There are four curses. We can play Witch every single turn, right? So at some point, the curses are going to run. All right, so he resigns. It was a pretty, it was a reasonable resign. He was, uh, he was in trouble, right? He and I think, and all of his woes started because he didn't get Witch. The only trashing was Trade Root and maybe Damana if you're lucky, but. The only trashing was Trade Route. That's a terrible card. And there's the only villages on the board were Necropolis and Dame Molly, which I was lucky enough to get. He didn't he couldn't count on that. So what he ended up getting was Sir Martin, Sir Michael, Dame Josephine, two trade routes, 
and another night. He was way over terminaled, and despite winning the peddler split six to four, no, uh, thanks to Sir Martin's buys, which we actually pointed out in the beginning, which helped him. That was definitely good for him. Despite that, he was way over terminaled, and he had two trash cards. Even he had two trashing cards. Even he had two trade routes, and he still ended up with four curses and five coppers. Meanwhile, I had one trasher. I kept my terminal space clean. I got a bunch of advisors early. He killed two of them. Um, so I did have five advisors. I bought five advisors. I bought knights when they were opportunistic. Um, like when I, saw Dan, when I saw Dame Molly, I picked it up because I knew I would be a good knight. When I saw Sir Bailey, which is a cantrip knight, I picked it up because it was nice. Um, I could play it for free. But I think the biggest thing was Witch, right? The biggest thing was Witch. If he had gotten a Witch, uh, I may have, st I probably still would have won because he played this very inefficiently with his terminal space. He definitely way over terminaled, which is a huge mistake. But I think his biggest mistake was not getting Witch. So once I got to Platinum, I just bought Platinum because Platinum's amazing, right? Usually buying treasure is not a good idea, but Platinum is like different, right? Platinum's really good. It's a really high amount of money. Um, so if you hit Platinum, if you hit 9, sometimes just buying a Plat's really good. We're going to play one more game for this video, and then uh, and then we'll see what everyone thinks. <clears throat> so last game, we have quite a bit going on here, right? Again, it's a very complicated board. He un. Dues. Okay, so he's going to buy Ducket, and he kills a Copper. Usually I don't like that. Um, so let's figure out what we're doing here, right? I want to open Priest. Priest is a good trashing card. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, Village Nobles draw, buys or Ducket Nidal. I will want to Ducket at some point. And again, there's Peddler, so we... We want a lot of these cards. I think I'm, I might actually open Ducket Priest. I might actually. Because I don't really want silver. At least not that much. And there's no other time really to get the Ducket. It's not awkward. I actually think his open was correct. I think I will actually take the Ducket here. And I might actually take another one. As well. He takes a village. I think I'm actually going to take another ducket. Let's just try it. Let's see what happens. He buys a bandit camp on his five. I actually think idle was better than bandit camp. I'm not going to buy another Ducket, though. I will buy Menagerie now, on the off chance I draw cards. And also, it helps get to Peddler. Here we hit 5, and I am going to take the Idol here. Idol is good because for multiple reasons. One, it can give me some nice boons that I quite like, actually. But also, if I get enough Idols together, I can curse him, which is really nice. Now he buys a second priest, and he has a village. He might be better off with trashing. So let's follow him on that, right? Let's get a second priest, and hopefully they don't collide. I'm taking a bit of a risk here, because I could have bought a village over Menagerie, right? Well, the Menagerie here is great. But I could draw the priest, so let's hope I don't. Let's see if we can get away with this. It's a bit risky, but I think it's good. He gets an improve, which I'm not too keen on, actually. Like, you can eventually improve the priests into idols or into whatever. We do get lucky. Now we will play the idol. Wow, okay. So now let's think a little bit, right? We could get double peddler. Double peddler is good. At the same time, though, we do need to get the village in. So, actually, the play here... 
I'm going to buy Noble's Village. Noble's being good as draw, firstly, and secondly, it's also a village in itself. It's quite efficient. Also has coins. It's a good card. It's not a great card, but it's a good card. So now, I think I want Village Menagerie. And we are gonna start eyeing these paddlers now. Let's see if we can draw nobles immediately. Because if we do, it's gonna be quite nice. So he buys his nobles here. He has two nobles, I have one nobles. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, so here we can play priest and then trigger menagerie. There is a nobles in there and we luckily find a village. Very lucky. We even find our priest and both of our buy. This is incredible, right? This is really lucky. And we even get to top deck a menagerie. I mean, we already knew we were going to have the menagerie. So we're in really good shape right now. Really good shape. I might... Hmm. Now what I want to do is I'm super clear. I think what I want to do is idle nobles peddler. I want to start cursing him, right? And nobles is okay. So let's see what happens. We got some lucky draws for sure. Menagerie is busted, right? Like menagerie is sometimes sometimes with menagerie you can really get some insane lucky draws, right? It can be pretty intense. I actually may have wanted to duck it. Oh well, Idol will eventually give us a plus buy, and then when that happens, we'll probably just buy a duck it, right? At the same time, we probably have enough. All right. So we will play Peddler now. No reason not to. We'll draw here with nobles. And we're looking pretty clean now. We get very clean now. So we are going to play the idol. Do I want a gold? I actually don't. I do, but I don't want to lose all of these cards in order to get to gold, right? So now I think I'm actually going to just buy Double Nobles Peddler? Or actually, the play might be Nobles Ducket Peddler. Yeah, let's try that. I want more buy to slam the peddlers into the ground. Because if you remember what I said last game, slamming the peddlers is usually a good idea if you can do it. So let's definitely go for that. Our deck's looking pretty good. And we're gonna take both of the nobles if he lets us next turn. So he should buy nobles double peddler. I expect it actually. There's also triumph on the board. We didn't talk really that much about triumph, but it's actually quite good here. Oh, is he not going to... Oh, he cancelled. Okay. <laughs> Triumph is actually a decent scoring option on this board. It can work out. Something you could do on this board is play a zillion bandit camps. See, it's gain of spoils. Play a ton of bandit camps, draw it all up. And at the end, Triumph. That's a thing you can do on this board. I didn't really ever think about it, but it is a thing you can do. We're going to draw here. Menagerie. Now Menagerie is not really going to draw that many cards for us, right? We are going to blow up the Priest here. We don't need it anymore. 
and we're going to keep launching curses at him. He is going to be able to deal with them, but it's also going to be annoying, right? So now we need money, and I think silvers are good. So what we can do here is we want the nobles. So let's get 12. Let's buy nobles. Let's buy conquest. Let's buy peddler. And let's buy triumph. Now we took a lot of VP there. We took five VP just off that triumph. And we're going to kill the estate with the priest, right? We're thinking ahead. We want the priest to be doing something every turn. So we might as well have it kill the estate, which is also unique for the menagerie. And we get to draw here as well. So we're looking pretty good in terms of what we're doing. We did use a lot of coffers, though. But it worked out quite well, I think. Here, he can slam the peddlers, right? It makes sense for him, too. And he might want to triumph at the end as well. So he could actually do double conquest, peddler, triumph. He may just double province here, though. Peddler and then triumph, probably. So he's going all out and scoring. I could beat that, though. I'm not terribly worried. He buys two peddlers. Well, you can never go wrong with that. Village. Let's draw the other pet. Uh, let's draw the other. We'll play the peddler. It would have been quite funny to immediately draw the menagerie. So client's lagging a little bit, but nothing to be done about that. We'll play idle. And we do hit Windskift. Thankfully, we have two cards to discard that we don't care about too much. We're going to pay off our debt. We do want more money, right? So what we can do here is I think we could double Conquest again. This might be a bit risky, but let's do it. So let's double Conquest. Let's buy Peddler, and let's buy a Triumph. Let's just score a whole bunch of points. Now our deck is looking quite nice to green, provinces why, uh, province-wise. But we are a little lacking with our draw, right? Like, if we don't find a Nobles here, we're not looking too good. But I think overall we're going to be potentially okay. We are going to need a lucky menagerie hit though, for sure. No menageries this turn. I'm actually going to just immediately kill the estate here. Let's play idle. Let's see what we get. Maybe we'll get Earth's Gift. We gain a silver. We're okay with gaining a silver. He has killed two curses. He has two more curses in his deck. He is resigning. Okay. Yeah, I th I think he definitely was behind, but I also don't think he was necessarily lost, right? I mean, mind you, he didn't have a lot of economy in his deck. He definitely wanted to conquest. He was definitely behind, but I don't think he was lost. He had bandit camps, right? So he could use bandit camps to gain spoils. So it's kind of like a, a disappearing gold in a sense. So if he gets to draw his deck, he's looking actually pretty good. The problem is he does have to draw his deck. So I'm constantly cursing him, which is giving him fuel for his priests. But like if he had gotten clean, his two priests would have loved that, right? Because he could have gained an estate off of the triumph and then also killed the curse and that gives him like six coins right so his priests that he bought earlier they're incredibly efficient but he never really did get clean so he needed more menageries he got one menagerie i got two menageries which is apparently enough i definitely got lucky 
I definitely got lucky that one turn. That one turn was incredible, where I exclaimed. Um, I'm not sure what else he did wrong, really. I think he did some things out of order. I didn't really examine his build. And if the client allowed, I would have gone over what he did and I would have talked about it, but we can't until Steph does something about that, really. Otherwise, I would have loved to. Oh, his improve. I didn't like his improve. There wasn't really anything interesting to improve into. Like, you, you, the thing about improve is it's really efficient, right? They can, like, say your priest is done being useful. Okay, well, I don't want the priest anymore. Let's turn it into a duchy or let's turn it into a bandit camp, right? Improve is an efficient card. It's also kind of a disappearing silver, right? So you can open improve and you can blow it up immediately into a four cost while hitting five. So you can buy a five cost and then blow up this improve because now you don't need it and you can turn it into like a caravan or something. But on this board, improve isn't doing that much actually. Hitting five isn't that important. What's more important is getting thin. So, Silver was not a good buy, so he opened correctly by buying Ducket to trash the Copper, because you want the buy. You might as well get it now, right? And then also the Priest, because Priest helps you trash. So, yeah, he played it early alright, but I think he bought some of the wrong cards, and he may have gotten worse draws, and then he just kind of started falling behind. He may have also committed to Nobles too soon. After all, he he did get the Bandit Camp too early, I think. Yeah, 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 okay. I think he could have just gotten a village. He didn't necessarily want the Bandit Camp, right? He like ban The thing about Bandit Camp is if you're drawing your deck, then it's great. It's very efficient. If you're not drawing your deck, you're technically not drawing a card, right? Because you do draw a card, but you're also junking yourself a one card. You are giving yourself a spoils. And spoils are bad. The nice thing about spoils is that when you play them, uh, you know, they disappear, right? That's great. But if you don't find your spoils, it's still junking you. So you want to make sure you draw your spoils that you're gaining off of the bandit camp because otherwise your deck gets a lot thicker. And that could be a problem when you're trying to trash with a card like Priest. So, that, those are my thoughts. I'm not actually sure completely what he did wrong. He may have just gotten worse shuffles. But at the same time, he did make less efficient decisions, which did hurt him in the long run. He did buy that bandit camp instead of buying, say, an idol. The idol could have helped him out, right? Because the boons are nice. And it's not like... It's really not like you want a bandit camp early anyways. The idol is doing more for you. <clears throat> and also there is the potentiality of cursing. Although... Of also, the cursing could help in the, in the long run. So eventually, maybe you don't want to do that. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Um, if you have any questions or uh, ideas or things you'd like me to try, I'm happy to do them. Uh, please feel free to read comments. I'll read them all. Um, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.